Hi, and welcome to the video. Open CV and play with some column models and do some grayscaling on some images as well. Now, to begin our video on grayscaling color spaces, I uh, want you to open this file here from your IPython notebook browser. This is titled 2 Grayscaling and Color Spaces. So let's load this file. And what this file has in it is blocks of code that are going to basically teach you how to convert an image to grayscale and then how to basically view the components, the individual channels in an RGB image and how to basically interfere or play with or boost different color components. And then we're going to take a look in the HSV color space as well in the last cell here. So to begin with, let's convert a color image. We're going to load the image here with this code, which you've seen in the previous chapter. And what we're going to do, we're going to use this function called cv2.cvtColor. And this function takes two inputs, it takes the image that we're loading here, and it takes this value here. Now this value is a function, it's a cv2 function here, that converts a color image here, color BGR, to gray. Now there are loads of different component functions we can use in OpenCV. This is the one we're going to use to convert it to grayscale. So we're going to rename this image here, because it outputs an image output here, and we're going to call this gray underscore image. And then we're going to display that image here. So let's now run this block of code. So that's our nice color image. And whoops, didn't run that there. Let's click on the image. And there we go, our nice grayscale image it looks quite good. You can see it basically adjusts perfectly. It looks the same image, however, all the color components are now shades of gray. So that's quite cool. And the algorithm it uses for this is basically finding the average of all the color components, red, green, and blue, at each pixel, and then gives you the average gray value here. And that's how it looks so accurate, okay? So if you want to read more about it here, you can click on these two links here just to get some more information from the documentation. Looking at the individual channels in an RGB image here. So you're going to learn two more functions here. You're going to learn cv2.split function, which splits an image into the color components here. Now remember the image here, we've already loaded up here, so we don't have to reload it again. Once it's loaded into this notebook here and we run this code, it's loaded in the background of your, basically your IPython notebook. So what we're going to do is split this image into the components here, and then we're going to create a blank image here. This blank image here is basically what we're going to use to basically show the different color components individually here. So we imagine we're creating a blank array of zeros in the same shape of the original image. That's why we use image.shape here. This is to capture the same dimensions here. And what we're doing here, we're just putting zeros in each two-dimensional color grid here. So this is the color grid for blue, color grid for green, and this is the color for R, which we got here. And the reason I print the shape here is that you can actually see the dimensions of each color component because it's going to be in a grayscale dimension, effectively grayscale meaning a two dimension. And what we're doing, we're just adding that three dimensional array here, use cv2.merge to merge it back. And that way you can look at each color component separately just like this. So this is pretty cool because what you can explore here is that there are a lot of details in the red and green components, especially the green. Now look at the blue. There's, there's basically all dark shades in the blue. And that means that the original image didn't have much blue in the additive color space here that was needed to represent the color image. It's quite nice and interesting to explore images like this. It's not always necessary unless you want to dig deeper, but it's a cool thing to see. Now let's look at something else here. We're going to do the same thing here. However, we're going to look at this separately. So effectively what we're doing, we're not looking at each color component as a color image. We're looking at it as a black and white image now. So you can see this is the red and green with a lot of detail, very similar to our original grayscale image. However, the blue is a much darker image as we would expect. So what else are we going to do here? We're going to boost the blue here. So look at the code below these images here. Let me just shift this up slightly. And what we're doing here, we're adding 100 to the blue values here in the image. So by boosting the blue, we can see that now it has a blue tint or blue shade to that image here. This is the original image over here, and this is it with boosted blue. Now, remember the blue image was quite dark, all right? Now, what would happen if you added 100 to, say, the green components of the image? You would max out a lot of the green values, and let's see how it looks. It looks like this, which is quite different to how the boosted blue image looked. And that's because green was already high. And when we push the green even higher, it just messed with everything here on the image. So it looks a bit cartoony right now. Whereas if we did a blue, it looks like a blue tint. If you wanted to get a more realistic looking image with the green, don't boost it that much. Maybe like by 30 or 40 would give you a more accurate representation of the image with the boosted greens. Actually, we can try it right now. 
Let's see how it looks. First part of the code. Second part of code here. So you can actually see while the sky changed pink for some reason, the image color components here, there's less clipping. Clipping means it's maxing out in the colors here and saturating to one color is a lot less common here in this image. So it's quite a good experiment to play with. And now lastly, let's look at the HSV color space. So you remember the components, the hue, saturation, and value, value being intensity. Now let's actually look at them separately. Now there's two things to note with HSV images right now. Firstly, OpenCV doesn't have a way of representing HSV when it imshow. Imshow treats everything as a BGR image. So that's why when we first look at the image here in this line right here, it doesn't look like you'd expect. You expect it to look. Let's bring that back. There we go. So you can see the HSV image basically looks nothing at all like the original image. And that's because OpenCV is trying to represent an HSV image as a BGR. So don't think too much about it. Just know that OpenCV's image show does not work with HSV images in that color space. But what we can see here, we can look at the individual channels. Let's just space this out a little bit more. So you can actually see now how the hue channel, how much it contributes to the image, the value and the saturation channels. So this is a quite interesting thing to look at. You can see these areas on the mountains are high in saturation values, whereas the sky is low. Similarly, you can see the hues in a grayscale representation, how it looks. Remember though, since the hue is only up to 179, the image is always going to look quite dark because of how Imshow represents it. If you wanted to multiply by a factor to scale it to 255, you could. It wouldn't make a huge difference, in my opinion. And you can look at the value intensity channel here as well. So you can see the brightest parts of the image was the sky, understandably so and some of the flowers and mountain tops here as well. So this is just a way to explore what HSV images look like, okay? So that concludes this video here on grayscaling and HSV and BGR color spaces. So to quickly summarize what we've learned in this lesson, you learned about color spaces and what they are. You learned a bit about RGB or BGR and HSV color spaces. You understood how to split images into the individual components of RGB and HSV in OpenCV and you were able to convert normal color images to grayscale in OpenCV. So let's move on to the next video, where we create and draw on images with OpenCV. Thank you.